Remember the, the deer hunting stories. You know, I learned how to deer hunt by faith. When I go out, I get my deer every time. Usually in 40 minutes, 30 minutes, 50 minutes. Now think about life, think about this. If you know without a doubt, when you leave the house, you're gonna get your deer, how does that change your perspective? I don't hunt deer, I receive them. People always smile. Right, I received them for 30 years. That's how it's been. And so this particular time when I learned this principle, I had sowed my seed for a button buck. I'm a meat, I like young, you know, it's a good eating deer, younger buck. And I went out again every year, got my deer, but didn't get it. Went out the next day, didn't get it. Now for most people, they would say, well, Pastor Gary, you can't expect every time you go out. I mean, that's just the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. No, it's not. I expect. I have learned, like a farmer, I have learned confidently that I'll receive. Now I've got to do my part. I've got to have my bow and everything ready to go. But as I was walking out of the woods, I was smart enough, learned enough to know to ask God what the problem was instead of changing my theology, saying, well, I guess it just doesn't work all the time, you know. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And he said, you didn't speak over it. Now he's talking about when I sowed my seed. He said, you didn't speak over it. He said, you remember Jesus with the bread? This, I'm, I'm praying in the spirit, right? I'm praying. The Bible says you pray in the spirit. You, you pray out mysteries. I needed an answer that I didn't have. And he said, you remember that story? I said, yeah. He said, that's what Jesus did. That's where I learned this. I was walking back to the house and I said out loud, I have to do that? I remember this day. I said, you have, I have to do that? I didn't know that. I went up to the house, got my next seat out, got it ready to sew because I'm going back out because I'm going to test this theory out. Sure enough, the next time I had my button buck. I didn't speak over it. When you come to church or anytime you sow, see, most people think I'm just going to give. Guess what you left out? And you'll, you should say the same thing I did. I have to do that every time? Because until you speak, it has no assignment. It has no harvest. You see, it's distinct. See, when you sow, it's, you're giving it a directive. This is why we always speak when we give the, the, the you know, pass the buckets and we give our offering. We speak. You've got to train you to speak over it. Now, you can't, you can't name the tithe. It already has an assignment. But you can rehearse the blessing of the tithe. Father, as I give the tithe today, I think of the, you know, the enemy is rebuked for my sake, that what I grow, my business, you know, no harm come near it. You're going to, you know, the blessing of God's on it. It's going to prosper. You can review the tithe's blessing. But when you sow specifically, what's in your mind? The picture of the harvest. You with me? The, the distinct picture, distinct seed, distinct picture of what you're receiving. And from that moment you sow it, you say, Father, I thank you that I have received that. According to Mark eleven twenty four. 24, that specific, in the name of Jesus, it's mine. I have it. And then you pray out the plan. Of course, there's more to the whole process. But we're going back to the beginning when you sow. Most people I know that sow, they just write a check out and drop it in the wherever. And there is... Uh, a benefit in that. You know, God does bring increase. I mean, you know, he does, that still has an effect. But if you need a specific harvest, you need to give a specific directive. People, see, they don't know that. When we sold that car to that missionary down in Atlanta, Johnny, he drove it down there for me, gave our car away, one of our cars away down back years ago. And as I was giving it away, he came to the garage, to our house here in Mount Vernon. He was going to drive it down to, to, to Atlanta to give it to this pastor, feeding the inner city people down there. I laid my hands on it, and I said, Father, I sowed this car into the ministry, and I receive, and I just stopped. Because I'm not really a car guy. I couldn't, I couldn't think of any, a car that I wanted. You know? And I just said, I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> and we began to talk about it. We said, you know, we... I said, Drina, what kind of car do you want? I want to see, I want to get her a car. What kind of, she, I don't know if she said, I think maybe a convertible, it might be nice. What kind of convertible? Well, pastor, why would you ask that? I mean, any old convertible will do. Ask God, he knows what's best. Friend, you're missing the whole thing. See, you already have the whole kingdom. You name it. Let me say it again. You already have everything. You name it. People say, well, I don't know. I'll let God do it. Listen, he already gave you everything. You name it. Your words are going to define 
what happens. And I told you, you know, went to that uh, strip mall. We're going to look around, and she yells out, there it is, you know, across the parking lot. I say, what, 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 what's going on? <laughs> there's, that's, that's what I want right there, that, that car, that kind of car. So I pull around, it's a BMW convertible. I said, you got good taste. <laughs> About 130 grand, yeah, you got good taste. Well, I wasn't going to spend 130 grand for a car, but I, you know, I was just going to think about, okay, that's what she wants. And then Johnny, her brother, calls us up and said, I saw drain this car. What do you mean? We haven't even told it. What are you talking about? You saw drain this car. I said, what kind of car is it? He goes, it's a BMW convertible. I can't remember the, the name numbers of all those things. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was a couple years old. Perfect mint condition. Uh, six series convertible, which is exactly what we saw in the parking lot and exactly what she, we have today. We bought it. It wasn't 130000 not even close. But the bottom line is, why did that car show up? Because that's the specific harvest that we released that car for. Is this making sense? All right, well, there's more to this whole equation. The book talks about it, but you got to learn how to reap, cultivate. And there's, you know, we're talking about just initially sowing that seed and how it operates. But the, 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 the kingdom of God's amazing. But I'm trying to help you understand that we're not talking about things. I mean, I'm trying to, people get upset. You're talking about BMWs or how, what, they're, they're things. We give them away. We, it, you, it, it's not life. There's no life in things, you know? I mean, Drenda drives a BMW, but it's a 2004. I mean, it still looks perfect, you know, but we're not into things, you know, but I'm just trying to help you not get a picture of the thing. I'm trying to help you get a picture of the process. You understand? I'll make sure you get that clear. And uh, so I was out, I got up this morning early before the sun rose, and as the sun came up, uh, last night, we, we have a flower bed down in our yard, and the groundhogs like to get after it. And so I've got this nice rifle I use out the back window and I see them down there because, I mean, they can tear, they're, you know, they're just, they just tear the thing up. And so I, I got this one last night and I've learned, you know, I don't have to take it out and bury it. I just, I set it out in the open because you know what's going to happen to it. The buzzards, they take care of that thing in a matter of, a, I mean, they, there's nothing left. And so I woke up this morning since I got it last night and here's, here's these buzzards. Now, we got this railing and stuff, and there's about seven buzzards sitting on this railing, and one is down there eating. So I'm curious. Now, one gets to eat this thing. The others are watching it. And I'm watching it for a while, and I see two of them hop off and kind of stay away from this guy. But they're kind of just walking around. But I notice an interesting thing. About 150 yards from where these flowers are, we have an orchard. And so the third row deep into the orchard, I catch movement, and I see two buzzards kind of pacing back and forth under the shade of the three deep trees, looking down there. I thought, this is really weird. I mean, these two buzzards are hiding. You can see they're up there, way up there in the tree shadows, and they're pacing back and forth, looking down there, but they're not going down there, right? And so I'm watching, and so finally, one of these two buzzards that are going back and forth decides to walk you think they would fly, but see, flying's too fast. See, he's he's going to test it. <laughs> True. I mean, I could, I could kind of think what's happening. He, he walks down through the 150 yards. He's walking instead of flying because flying would be too abrupt. He's kind of seeing if he can kind of sneak in there. And he comes. Well, one of these two that are circling the, the guy eating sees this, and they begin to walk towards him. And they meet halfway. And the guy that's coming up, they get in a fight. And the guy that comes down the hill, he turns around and starts heading back up the hill. And uh, so, anyway, so he's heading up. And then at that moment, uh, a, a doe with two yearlings comes out beside this buzzard climbing back the hill towards the orchard. I thought it was so funny because, you know, he's the loser, right? Come on, he's the loser. You know, he's a loser. And so the, the little fawns, they come up and start walking towards him. And you see how the buzzards put their wings out, how they... They sit there like that, buzzards, right? And so he sees these fawns walking towards him. He goes, like that, and they stop, and uh, they're, they're trying to check him out. And finally, the mother snorts, and they all take off running. And I, this is a great illustration. 
don't be like the buzzards. All right, I, got, I wrote this down. Fighting over dead things. Living in a hunger-filled identity. So this little guy, he's hungry. His identity, now see, he's got to, he can't beat the big guy. He can't beat them, but he's going to find someone else to pick on. And his identity, you know, he gets to gain some identity from running off the deer, but he's still hungry, right? So don't be like the buzzards. There's plenty of room at God's house. You don't have to fight over the dead things and try to get your identity from trying to be someone, you know? Everyone has room at God's house, at his table. And God wants you to enjoy life. That's why he called it the good life. He's given you all things to enjoy, the Bible says. And so I thought that was an cool, interesting story. Someone had to help me understand the, the hierarchy in the buzzard world. I don't know. But it was definitely interesting. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.